How did Martin Luther King Jr. get started on his nonviolence path? Even as a young man, um, as a teenager, uh, Martin Luther King had been exposed to Gandhian ideas. Uh, he had um, studied at Morehouse College uh, with um, Benjamin Mays was the president, and he had been one of the a number of African Americans who had been to India and uh, had met with Gandhi or other members of the Gandhian movement. And um, so he was aware of, of these ideas, uh, uh, certainly when he was there, 15, 16, 17 years old. When he went off to Crozier Theological Seminary, he um, heard a lecture by Mordecai Johnson, another of the African American leaders who had been to India and had uh, uh, met with, with Gandhi. And uh, he uh, gave a lecture. At, at first, I think um, Martin Luther King was skeptical. Uh, he did not understand how uh, Gandhian ideas were sufficient to deal with a, an evil like uh, the Nazis uh, during World War II. Um, but, it, but he did uh, have a great interest in, in the lecture and, and went out and bought books about Gandhi that uh, informed him more. Um, I think another source of influence were, was the writings of Howard Thurman. Howard Thurman had met uh, with Gandhi uh, in 1935 or 36, I think, and had had a long conversation about uh, uh, about nonviolence and about maybe applying the nonviolent ideas. Gandhi had uh, had encouraged that in terms of uh, whether they these ideas might be applicable to solving the race problem in the United States. So all of this was was part of King's background before the Montgomery bus boycott. But it, when the boycott started, he uh, he was not a, initially a, a proponent of, of anything like Gandhian resistance. Uh, he believed in nonviolence, but it was uh, partially uh, because of his Christian background and partially because it was a necessity uh, for a movement like the uh, the boycott movement. It was nonviolent, um, but transforming a nonviolent movement into his nonviolent ideas took time, and I think a crucial person in this respect um, was Bayard Rustin, who arrived in Montgomery in February of 1956 and had a long background himself in, in terms of learning about and understanding and practicing Gandhian nonviolence going back to the 1930s. He had been involved with the March on Washington movement during World War II, the movement to desegregate the, the military. Um, he, he was uh, certainly a, a veteran of nonviolent struggles. And moreover, he, he had met uh, Coretta Scott King. Uh, she had been a high school student when she first heard him, and she was herself an activist, a uh, nonviolent activist, much more than King was when they met. Uh, so when she told uh, Martin that... Uh, having guns around the house. Martin still at that point had went out and got a, a gun permit early in the boycott to, for, so, so that his bodyguard would be able to protect him and his family. And when she said that uh, having a gun, a gun around the house didn't make her feel more secure, I think that led uh, Martin Luther King to, to be uh, more open to the idea of nonviolence, not just as a, as a tactic, but as a principle. And I guess finally, um, during the course of the boycott, uh, Glenn Smiley was also a very important influence. Uh, during um, Baird Rustin had to leave because of the controversy about his presence as an outside agitator. Glenn Smiley was able to be more low profile during the boycott, and. Um, was able to connect King to the Fellowship of Reconciliation, um, which provided um, help in terms of disseminating uh, Gandhian, Gandhian ideas, including later on publishing a comic book um, about the, uh, the Montgomery bus boycott. So that by the end of the boycott, I think he had come to the point where he accepted uh, Gandhian resistance as a, 
as a principle as opposed to simply nonviolence as a tactic.